Hello, we're back. Let's continue talking about role-playing games and what we can do about them. <laughs> what is to be done about role-playing games? <laughs> <laughs> We've heard about this new satanic panic crossing so the nation. I'm, what we need to do is gather up all these role-playing games and hurl them into the fire. Throw them yes. into the hot, hot fires of Jesus Christ. We can all no. stand around chanting, ha-ha, games industry. <laughs> Don't do that. No, we're not. We love role-playing games. Clutch them to your to your bosom. Yeah. So, uh, in case you joined us a little bit late, and I see we have like what fourteen hundred people here today. That's fantastic. You all rule. Um, you are I, all my favorite nerds. I think we're getting hosted by JP, who's the man. Um, I think you're right. So, what are we doing? We are taking a hard look at the rules of Fifth Edition Dungeons and Dragons, so that we can hack it up and turn it into a game that works better for the West Marches specifically. Um, which has a stronger focus on exploration, discovery, advancement, not just of your character, but also of town and stuff like that. So, um, the big rule that we wanted to address and try to change was inspiration. And I've prepared a variant rule that uh, could potentially be dropped into um, the West Marches. It would replace gaining inspiration from personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws, because effectively we've agreed that those can just be cut from 5th edition for the purposes of the West Marches um, for various reasons. If you're curious about that, go watch episode 1, which is on YouTube's, uh, which is on Adam's YouTube's channel, not YouTube's Adam channel. Good. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I'm just gonna so, let you keep talking. Go, just go. Oh, uh, I can I can stumble all over myself <laughs> so, all day, Adam. That's that's I mean, my special skill. Like, okay, so we're I think we're we're doing this from like the the most or the least complex and difficult thing to hack all the way up to the most, which is why we're yeah. saving experience for last because experience yep. I think yeah I think asks more questions than it's gonna answer. Yeah, but we're, we'll we're gonna to have that. some realizations when we talk about experience. so inspiration. Uh, we talked about before what it was for, why it exists a little bit. I want to quote some things from from. I would like to quote the scriptures. Yeah. So <laughs> the best description of the purpose of inspiration in Fifth Edition Dungeons and Dragons that I could find personally with like a half hour of flipping through it um, is. Inspiration is a rule the Dungeon Master can use, not uses, can use, to reward you for playing your character in a way that's true to his or her personality traits, ideal, bond, and flaw. Mm -hmm. So the Dungeon Master doesn't, doesn't even have to give you inspiration if you follow your trait, ideal, bond, bond or flaw. Follow your blonde. Um, because it says right here they can. They don't have to. And there's no guidelines in the game for the GM deciding when or when to do that or not. It's just like, if you do the thing, you get inspiration. But really, the purpose of the game is to give you more control over whether or not you succeed or fail at certain mm. things, right? You because mean it's, it's for the GM to give... To have more control over when the, GM, the players succeed or fail. Yeah, like it's the GM, and and this is way this is a way in which Dungeons and Dragons is very much uh, a traditional game. The GM is the withholder, and the players are the ones who struggle for what the GM is withholding. Right, the GM is withholding circumstances. They're withholding inspiration. They're withholding XP. They're withholding treasure. They're withholding exploration of the space the game takes up uh, at the table. Right, and inspiration is a way for the GM to say. You're a good role player. Here, have some have some control over whether you succeed or fail at whatever you like, whatever role you'd like to make. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's it's for Dungeons and Dragons. I think that it, it makes sense to have it. It gives you control over whether you have advantage or not, or it helps you mitigate when you have disadvantage. So, if the GM is giving it to you, you can be like, "Whoa, I'm going to spend my inspiration to make this." Slightly less difficult. I'm going to make a regular roll instead of a totally punishing one. Um, so it's like, I don't know, it's, it's an interesting thing. Um, because I think that, okay, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you an analogy. I don't like analogies, but I'll give you one anyway. Um, there's a game that was designed by my, uh, a friend of mine, Logan Bonner, uh, called Refuge in Audacity. It's a satirical role-playing game. It's totally silly. It's a fantastic little game. Definitely worth checking out, but there's a mechanic in it where it literally says if a player says something in a funny voice, um, plays their character correctly, or does something funny, say to them, and there's a phrase you have to say, that's good role playing, and give them a d20. They can then use that d20 on top of their normal d20 whenever they make a roll 
as long as they have the die. If someone else is a good role player, you take that die away from them. You give it to the new good role player. Nice. This is that. Like this yeah, is a mechanic. Much. This is a mechanic that I saw first in a game like satirizing rewarding role playing. Mm-hmm. So it's like I don't know, it's it feels to me like a little bit like lazy design. It feels a little tacked on. You get it in kind of a mushy way and it only really works for you to mitigate the chaos plateau, right? You yep. Because you can still really get things like fucked up if you have advantage. You can still roll two ones. There's, yep. there's still a chance for that to happen. Um, so inspiration in the game, its purpose is to mitigate player lack of control over success or failure by way of rewarding them for good, good role playing, according to what we know about that's good role playing about what we know uh, about the um, the characters' past, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. By way of their background. Yeah. So. Um... You know, do you have more you want to talk about the stock option I mean, I of role playing, or yeah, I could, I could, should I we could go on to how we can change it? Well, so the only other thing that I wanted to say is that that there's a there's a sentence in the book. Your DM will tell you how you can earn inspiration in the game, which this is the key, man. This 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 fucker right here. This is Dungeons and Dragons telling us you're the DM. You can say when they get inspiration. So all this other stuff, you can use to reward you for playing your character. Mm-hmm. We are choosing to take that sentence literally and ignore all that other crap. Yep. We're going to tell players in the West Marches how they get inspiration. I'll tell you how. So what 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 merits inspiration in the West Marches? What do we want to use it as a reward for? What do you get? So like the spirit of inspiration is that the players have done something that is true to themselves that explores more about their character uh, rather than playing to their like maximum efficiency as far as like you know what they should do in a situation maybe they take some kind of a risk or something like that it shows more of the 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 characterization of the character the person is playing um and the the stuff that i have loved to see the most in in the west marches so far is situations where a character sort of realizes something fundamentally unexpected about themselves as they're adventuring. So all the sort of interaction between Sheldrick and his dead brother was fantastic. Like that sort of exploration of Sheldrick's sort of descent into madness after losing his brother is fantastic. Kellen and his interaction with his father was great because it was, uh, you know, we learned more about Kellen as a result of seeing that scene. Um, those things are things I'd love to see more. They seem to feel similar in, in terms of what Inspiration was trying to do originally from Traits, Ideals, Bonds, and Flaws, in that they come from a similar place of needing to explore more of the characterization. Um, and they feel very West Marchy in that they tie into the sorts of sort of external versus internal exploration. So... Yeah. Uh, shall I give the the variant rule I've prepared? Well, I mean, let's let's talk a little bit about reward and, and behavior, right? So, because mm-hmm. we, I, I was thinking while you were telling me that about some of the like less, um, I don't even know how to say it, like less like Zeke players who are not Zeke. Yes, <laughs> because there are some people whose personality, and you see this at every table, right? Engaging in the mechanics shouldn't inherently reward a person for their personality. Yeah. Some personalities are better for certain games, but you shouldn't ever be like, you're quiet and want to engage the game mechanically more than in character, so we're going to punish you. You never get inspiration. Or inversely, you don't want to punish someone for doing a thing over and over and over until you don't notice it anymore. Yep. Right? Like so, Zeke. Yeah, exactly. Like Zeke. He's really hard. It's, it's harder to give inspiration to people who are good role players than it is to give ones who are shy because you never notice when they're doing it because they do it all the fucking time. Yep. Right? So that's why this is is difficult, right? Is that you can't have, unless you have a party full of Zeke's, it just doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Or if you have a party with none of them. So occasionally when someone spikes inspiration, there you go. They're rewarded. So what we need is a situation in which there's a clear and obvious I did this I get inspiration and whatever that situation is that's the thing that you're rewarding players for doing so don't make it something you don't want in your game yep right so 
basically it's that this is the thing about thinking about uh, reward structures, right? Is that if you include one or if you change one, players will do the thing you're rewarding, and sometimes they will do a thing that doesn't feel like the thing that you intended them to do. Yes. Right? That, they're gonna where, go looking they're gonna go looking for alternate ways to get inspiration that still fit the letter of the rule. That's where playtesting needs to come in, right? Like mm -hmm. I'm I'm gonna tell you the, the the proposed rule and it could work really well for like ninety percent of cases, but then, you know, when when a power gamer plays someone I, I don't actually feel like anybody so far is a power gamer in the West Marches, but yeah, eventually. I haven't, I haven't I haven't gotten enough chance to play. Yeah, Just wait. Yeah. <laughs> when Adam plays next, he'll be like, "Here, I'm going to do that stupid thing you asked me to do." Yeah. Um so yeah, here here's the variant rule and maybe there will be interesting and broken ways that people use it and then we'll have to adjust it. Well, yeah, and I think what we want to do here and and this is the advantage of of design in a, an open space, right? Like if you had just designed a rule, so I'm, I'll go on a very minor tangent here. Yeah. A lot of game designers run into problems when they don't realize that game design is a community activity, right? Because role-playing games are community activity. So people will look at a game like D&D and they'll be like, cool, I can make this better. I can fix this game. I am going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to make the best D&D that ever existed. So you sit down, you look at D&D, you make a ton of notes, you do some like figuring out in your head, you make a new game, you buy 5,000 copies of it, you go to Gen Con and you're like, everybody buy my game and no one wants to because you didn't design it with pe other people in mind. Yep. So the advantage that we have here is that you you came up with a variant inspiration rule. It's going to be my job to question the decisions that you made in that rule, right? To say, okay, why is it like this? How can we break it? What might be wrong with it? Where is it strong? Right. So we have that opportunity to go back and forth on this functionally live, right, with an audience. Yep. And then and whatever we whatever we come up with, then we can test it for real in play and do this again. And I don't I don't actually only just have you, although like your expertise means that your feedback is incredibly valuable. I have a thousand people watching yeah, who can exactly also you. say, like, hey wait a minute, one of them will pop up and be like, I would just do this and I'd be like, shit, that that would be really lame. Alright, scrap yeah. it. So yeah. Uh, here it is. Actually, uh, this is fun for me because you're getting to see something that I only ever do at work, uh, mm. live broadcast uh, in front of a thousand people, which is <laughs> that like, I, I come up with an idea, and I like this idea. I think it's a cool idea. I'm like, yeah, this is going to be really cool. And then I go to the team of people that I work with, and I say, this is a good idea. And they all say, no, Stephen, that is a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell and you why say, it's a bad idea. Ah, let, me, let me think about this idea more. <laughs> And then I'll go like rework it and come back and be like, it's a better idea. Let's talk about this idea. And then they'll game be design, like, ah, yeah. Yeah. game design. Game design is nonlinear. It's it's iterative, right? And, and and one of the hardest things for me to learn when I was a very early designer, you know, five years ago or something, was to be in a meeting with my peers and have them tear apart my awesome idea and show me all the ways that it was bad, and then be able to say, okay, you're right. Go back and redo it. So. Um, and that's, think, and that's also a very hard skill for everybody to learn. That's just really hard. I think from a perspective of if you're if you're watching the show with the intent of being a game designer yourself or of doing like system hacking like we're doing, you getting comfortable with and understanding how to interpret criticism yeah. uh, is is so huge, right? Because like even even now, like I've I've designed a complete role playing game, I've co designed a bunch of other stuff. Like I I've been doing this for a while. But every time I get feedback, whether it's from an editor or another designer or something on something I thought was really cool, I'm like, ah, yep. it hurts. It's oh, hard, God. guys. I'm an get... creative piece of shit. Oh, God. What's get, wrong with me? Get used to it. Yeah, it you just got to get good with that stuff. Because once you're able to be like, actually, that's cool, then you can start to process it. And, and the thing is, too, is like when people give you criticism, they're not always perfect about how they do it either, right? Someone might say, like, you should do it this way. You can be like, no, shut up. You can tell me why you think there's a problem, or you can tell me problems you've experienced with it, but don't tell me solutions, right? I'm, I'm designing this game. I might ask for your input, but I don't need, we don't need fixes. I'm not going to tell Steven, do this instead of that. I'm going to ask him, why is it like this? Is this a problem with that thing? Might this be an issue? So yeah. let's, well, let's, let's, let's stop teasing and get on with it. All right, so variant rule number one, inspiration. Here's the rule. Before the start of the session, think about your character. What's something you don't know about them? Write down a question you'd like to learn the answer to. Choose something small that you could learn in a single scene. When the group takes a long rest, 
You can choose to offer your character moment. This can take the form of a flashback, roleplay this out, or a story your character tells the others around a campfire, as it were. If at the end of this scene, uh, so, well, rather, at the end of this scene, tell the group the question you wrote down. If everyone agrees it's been answered, or your understanding of it has changed significantly, everyone at the table gains inspiration. Okay. So the idea here would be that all four players come up with a question, right? Like, like I could say, um, ostensibly, if it's something that I need to be able to answer in a single scene, uh, I might say, um, why is... I want to see this isn't about my character. Like, my first thought would be about another character. I would mm -hmm. want to be like, you know, why is... Why is that weird dwarf carrying the bag of bones around? I'm like, what's what's the story there? Yeah. Right? Um, if I want to answer something about my character... See, this is the thing. Like, I, I would ha I'd be hard-pressed to come up with a question. Because I feel like I, I know everything about my character already. And then mm -hmm. stuff from outside makes me want to ask questions. I would almost, for me... Uh, be more, I would be more focused. My initial response to this would be to more be more focused on another character than on myself. That's my initial reaction. Um, am I allowed to share my question? Let's say I can think of something for myself. Um, am I allowed to share it with the other players? Can I metagame this? Can I say, okay, so during this session, somebody asked me why I'm carrying this bell like around. Just like ask me, ask me, set me up so I can play out my scene. Mm -hmm. Is that a thing I'm allowed to do? Um, it's implied, if I look later, that whole, like, tell the group the question you wrote down, that's implied that I wasn't supposed to tell them. Yeah, prior to that point. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I like that it's tied to a, to a long rest. Um, everybody gets one, so that means that you're only going to have inspiration a maximum of four times in a session. Mm -hmm. So there's a pacing question there. Is that enough inspiration? How often do you hand out inspiration now? Right? Not. Not at all, yeah. ever, unless someone begs you for it. Pretty much. Um, so you're going to get more inspiration. That's good. Do you feel like that's the same amount of inspiration that the designers intended characters to have throughout the game or not, right? Do you feel like it's more or less? Does the game do a good job teaching you how much inspiration you should have, right? Like, again, Burning Wheel tells you you should be getting between three and six fate points every session, right? Or whatever. I forget what the exact numbers are. So there's a thing. Um... So if four is four enough for a session, is that going to take up too much time? How long should these scenes take? Um, what's the length of a scene? Like, you've, you've added a thing to Dungeons & Dragons that D&D doesn't have. D&D doesn't have scenes. What's a scene? How long is a scene? How do we know? Right? When am I, when am I done telling my story? Are, am I going to look at the GM and be like, Did, are we done? Did I figure it out? No? Okay, let me play a song on my Bella Leica and I will tell you about that. And, like, how do we know? It's unclear to me looking at this whether... Um, yeah, whether this is a thing that I can I can decide when I'm done or not, mm -hmm. um, because the trigger for inspiration isn't you told the story. It's did you answer the question, or do you, does the group have a different understanding of the question than it was written? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, again, like the the intrinsic reward for this is. Uh, the obvious reward is inspiration. The subtle award is everybody learns more about your character. And as players, we're being rewarded both for our presence in the game, right? Like having everybody understand uh, our character better, but also we get bonus audience understanding our character, right? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, my part of my reward for playing West Marches is like fan art. If people ask me questions about my character and you know, in jokes about my character being circulated in the game and like that kind of stuff is a it's an inherent reward. And I think that's true for a lot of the players too. We like the the interaction with the fans by way of our mm. character. So I think this hits that really well. Yeah. Right? Mechanizing an opportunity for me to be like, let me tell you about my character. So you know, but how like how long is that gonna take? How does it fit into the rest of the game and its pacing? Yeah. Um and it, once I've gotten mine, like once I burned off my question, what is the point of me exploring my character anymore? Uh, no, those are all excellent questions. So, um, yeah, like let, let me write that last one down because that's sure. a really salient point. One, one, thing, one thing that I think that's important to look at is it's going to feel like... People are always like, oh, well, this the, like, forcing people to roleplay always feels... It feels forced. It feels like you're making them do it. But... 
every reward structure in every game ever made is forced. Yep. You're forced to engage in combat to get experience. If you want XP, and it's not just a byproduct of play for you, you're forced to fight monsters or, or encounter and avoid, in some way, monsters. So it's not... Um, it's not a new thing. That's that's how game mechanisms work. That's how reward structures work. They're you're, you're being encouraged to do a thing. Yeah. Um, you can be more or less subtle with it. This just happens to be a fairly straightforward, like do this, get that approach. Yeah. So I'll go uh, like point by point. So um, should the question play? Uh, should the question players write be about another character instead of their own character? That was like the first question you asked. I've seen a couple of people in chat asking that exact same thing. Yeah. Um, I would say no. Because then you might have situations where, for example, certain players naturally create much more complex and much more mysterious characters that people want to know a lot more about. Like, um, I, I feel like uh, Kellen is a character who naturally has a lot of curiosity built into his relationship with his parents and what he wants to do, and, and Shaldrick as well. But there are others who just don't. And I also feel like that's sort of a, a victory snowball kind of thing, where like as soon as one question comes up about a character, that character gets a scene to answer it, which asks other questions, and it expands, and everybody wants to know, oh, what's up with Kellen now? And then that's, everybody asks, hey, how about how about your character? That's my that's my new my new D and D character's name, Victory Snowball. <laughs> victory Snowball, yeah. Um, so I'm gonna so, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip I'm gonna flip flop that on you. Okay. Um, my my counterpoint is I'm the least interested, and this might just be my inner GM talking. I'm the least interested in the people who have the strongest ideas about their character. Right. Mm. I would not necessarily focus my attention on someone that had a big obvious question. I would want to go after like the the Zoe's of the group and be like. Why does why is your character acting so much more evil now than you were the last time I saw you? What changed, right? Mm -hmm. I want to know why you're different. Like some little thing, or like, uh, why do you keep adventuring with us? Or what would it take for me to get you to officially be my bodyguard, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah, it's it's easy for other uh, like. And, and maybe this is a thing. Maybe it's a difficulty thing. Maybe it's easier for some players who are new to ask questions that feel more obvious, like about like Kellen or or Maldrick and Sheldrick. Like maybe those are easier ones to go after, and and that's a valid balancing mechanism. But for me personally, as a player, I'm not drawn to the the really strong characters for this mechanic by default. There is a, a potential way of doing it that I could see. But I think it's too complex to actually work well at the table. Okay, so mm -hmm. um, in the first long rest, anybody can ask anybody else a question. And then that person is the one who has to ask someone else a question next time. So if you ask Zoe a question, then next long rest, Zoe has to ask someone else a question. But it can't be the person who asked her a question. So it's, tr it's, it's basically you're adding truth or dare. To Something like secret. that. Yeah, you could, you could <laughs> sort of like go around that way. And each person can only ask her one question at a stream or a session. But uh, like that feels like it starts getting very bookkeepy and very uh, record keeping. I, I mean, I, I don't think so. Because all you have to remember is who asked the last question, right? And these, like, these, should, be, these should just be like scenes from uh, uh, like... A computer RPG where you have the whole party, you hit the rest button, and oh, cutscene comes up, and it's like mm -hmm. two of the NPCs, and they're talking to each other, right? Yep. Like you could just say when you do a long rest, who wants to take their their refresh scene? Yeah. Uh, in this, and and I think that that's, I, I mean, I think it's completely valid as a as a mechanic to just pass the initiative for that around to be like, if I asked you, then you ask. JP's character, and then JP has to ask, and then everybody gets their their turn, mm -hmm. basically. Now the thing is, is if everybody, I think it's fair if everybody gets inspiration, because it's it just happens. But it also rewards the players who don't do anything. You're getting a reward for literally nothing. Yeah. If you're not a participant in the scene. Mm -hmm. Which um, is okay. I'm just you know, I'm just mentioning that. It's that's a, a thing. thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons that I like that is because. Uh, one of the one of the behaviors that I see right now is I'll give somebody inspiration and they just won't use it. They'll hold on to it forever and ever and ever. Because, Do you think that's okay? Go ahead. You're because, answer my question before I ask it. Because they don't necessarily know when they'd get it again. Yeah. And partly that's because the the way that they get it is very esoteric and arcane and and it's not clear. But yeah, if it, not, if it not were ar not arcane in the cool wizard way either. Yeah. If it, if it were very clear. Every time there's a long rest, you have a very good chance of getting inspiration as long as one of the four people at the table still has something to share about their character. Um, yeah. and, and so basically it means like, okay, I have inspiration. 
we're coming up to sort of the end of our adventuring day. You know, I might as well spend this because I'm going to get it back tonight. Um, and uh, the the most salient I think question, you're right. the most salient question there becomes if uh, uh, wait is this the same amount of inspiration the designers intended players to have? I think that's an excellent question, and I think that it's more inspiration. Maybe, but it's I hard mean, to say because okay, there's no guidelines. Let's, let's hit Twitter and be like, "Fucking Greg, Greg Bilson, Mike Merrells, Wizards D and D. How much inspiration am I supposed to be getting here? Like, yep. what what was your intent? And if the designers can't answer the question, this is like a huge flag that inspiration is not a finished mechanism, yeah. right? Like, if if you don't understand the pacing of the economy in the game as the person who designed it, then no one else will ever be able to. So that I mean that for me is a very interesting question. Yeah. Now I see I see these things as there's another game, uh, role playing game called Lady Blackbird, mm -hmm. that has uh, a refreshment mechanic where you use up your dice. You have like a dice pool and you use it up and you don't recover it until you take a refreshment scene. So I'm gonna read the I'm gonna read the description of the refreshment scene here. So. You can refresh your pool back up to seven dice by having a refreshment scene with another character. You may also remove a condition or regain the use of a secret that's just a mechanic in the game, depending on the details of the scene. A refreshment scene is a good time to ask questions in character so the other player can show off the aspects of their PC. Why did you choose this life? What do you think of the lady? Why did you take this job? Etc. Refreshment scenes can be flashbacks too. So, I mean, you could see the parallel here, right? Mm -hmm. Like, Now, I think that what this does is it... it it's sort of like take some of the narrative control away from the player, I would go, because this is me and this is like, I'm used to these kinds of games, I would go so far as to say, turn narrative control over to a player and say, frame a scene for yourself and another character, have that in-character conversation, close the scene, tell us what you learned about them, bam, everybody gets inspiration, right? Now, is this frame a scene for yourself and another player character? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where or is it? Like, could it see, be? Again, could it be again, frame a scene for yourself and another non-player character? Maybe. Like I don't. You don't have control over that. I think you have control over whether you're framing a scene in which you attempt to answer a certain question. Mm -hmm. Like I think it'd be really fun to be like, okay, cool. We all have a long rest. Then you say, all right, JP, Kerthak and someone else have a little like moment, and JP's like, okay, cool. Well, like I cornered Grigori when he's coming back from the bushes after he's just like taking a nice long drunk pee. He's coming back, it's all dark, and he's like, you know, kind of off balance. So I'm like, hey, where did that peasant woman go? Why did you come back with blood all over you? And then I, we have to play that scene out. Mm -hmm. um, so here's here's sort of where I'm thinking because uh, this is actually very inspirational to me. Um, you know, frame a scene for yourself and another player character. Set the circumstances of that scene. So like, w when has it occurred? Who is involved? What's going on? And uh, and the stakes for the scene. So like uh, maybe you need to define what you're hoping to get out of it. This is also sort of like, I've only read Fiasco and I really should play it, but kind of like, okay, you can either frame or, or determine whether it's good or bad for you, but like determining sort of what would be a good outcome versus a bad outcome, being able to say like, I want to know what happened. You know, I, I, I meet Grigori coming back from a piss and I want to know what happened with that peasant woman. Yeah. Like that is framing the scene and setting the stakes. Um, yeah. And then play out the scene. If at the end you've uh, answered the stakes of the scene, everybody gets inspiration, or the participants get inspiration, or something. Yeah. So, so the um, I think that the thing here is the goal. If you set the stakes of the scene, right? But the person who's playing the scene with you, if they are also rewarded in the same way, he's gonna the the, the goal here, the me the mechanical goal, will be. He's gonna say to me, "Okay, what happened with that peasant woman?" I'm gonna be like, uh, "I killed her with my sword," and then we're both gonna look at you and be like, "Bam, inspiration, <laughs> thanks, dude." Right? Like, there. I don't know if there needs to be um, like a push pull kind of thing there, or like some kind of mechanic. The thing is, is the Dungeons and Dragons doesn't really give a shit about your character, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like, except as a block of stats. So this is a, a it's going to be a difficult thing for us to build because we're creating an environment in which the players should care about each other, and the um, the uh, the 
the players, yeah, they should care about each other, and we want to impart some information about our characters together. Like, we're all on a team, and mm -hmm. ostensibly, I'm not just there to make it the Grigori show. Like, I care about what's happening with the other players and what their characters, and I want to hear what their ideas are. And this is a really strong way for us to, to bring that. But I don't know that you necessarily have to tie it into the question being answered. I think we could just have the scene, and for the people in that scene, they get inspiration, but neither of them can be in the next scene. Mm-hmm. Um, um, so now, like, that I also think is potentially dangerous, because then I just say, okay, you know, I'm Kurthak, I come back, um, and, and I see Varani uh, and Grigori and Shaldrick sitting around the campfire, and I say, hey, you three, what do you think happened to that, that woman that, that, that Grigori had? And then ever, since everybody's in the scene, everybody gets inspiration, right? So it's almost like... Um, well, it, I mean, originally the plan was like let's look, let's let's take a step back and look only at the mechanical component. Mm -hmm. um, what do we want here? Do we want to reward all four players inspiration every time there's a long rest? Well, is that what, our is that our mechanical goal ultimately? Like if we're doing it right, man, that it seems really shitty when you say it like that. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> um, I think. I mean, what, that's 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 what it feels like, right? Like, I mean, yeah. the the sub goal, the non mechanical goal, the the audience and cast and like role playing fun and the communal storytelling thing, like that's obviously about we're doing this to learn about the characters to make them more interesting and fleshed out and because we care about them, right? Mm -hmm. But mechanically, we're trying to get that to happen by giving out inspiration every time there's a long rest. So this is this is actually why um, part of why I wanted or I originally designed it as. It's a question that you have about yourself, and that uh, the scene is designed to answer that question somehow, whether it's with another player character or whether it's with an NPC, either way, and then everybody gets it. So one, um, everybody has one, right? So no matter whether you're super active about your character and super creative and you can just think of a dozen questions, you have one. Or if you're super new and you're very shy, um, all you have to do is come up with one question. Uh, and then, uh, whether you are super active and super creative and super role play -y, like you have your scene and everybody gets the benefit of that, even the people who are shy. Um, and then, yeah. So I, still, I still really feel like coming up with questions about your character is way harder than just coming up with facts about your character that someone else could learn. Because, like, and I'm not saying it's a better th fit for this, but like, I... I don't know, man. Like, I would find it really hard to come up with a question about Grigori without also answering it immediately. Maybe right? because I'm not I'm not asking a question about a thing I don't know about. I'm asking a question about a thing I know literally everything about and can make up at any moment. So I'm so, not curious about. So my here's here's what the, the the example I'm drawing directly from is Kellen's encounter with his father, right? So like that's that's kind of I want to see more stuff like that happen, um, and. It maybe maybe the, the maybe the problem is in the wording. It shouldn't be a question because like maybe maybe the way that uh, Kellen got into that wasn't I have a question about my character, but rather I want to see something about my character. I want to yeah. show something to the other players, not necessarily the other characters. And that's that's a thing. That's a thing that I I would I would say is like for in this session. At some point during one of the long rests where we have our campfire scene, I would like to teach the other players and the audience about Dr. Grigori. I know mm -hmm. one specific Grigori thing I want to share. I'm going to be sharing a bunch of other stuff, but this is an important thing. And the the problem, though, is, is that I should be the one rewarded for revealing that, and so it just makes me want to, like, have my scene and get that inspiration and use it up and, like... I don't know, it's it's tricky because it's it's... I don't know if revealing stuff about your character should be mechanized because if if it is, yep. it's not about exploring, it's about showing, right? Yep. We're not learning, we're explaining. So I still and and again this is I'm not I'm not trying to like solve this problem, but as a player my inclination is going to be way stronger to ask questions about the other players. And they might be specific, they might be like, you know, what's the deal with Kellen's daddy issues? But it might also be general. It might be like, who in this party can I trust with my secrets? Or can I trust so-and-so with the truth of my religion, right? Yeah. Like, that, that kind of stuff 
for me, feels like so much more compelling because I can build on it, right? My next question could be, you know, now that I learned this about that person, what else do I want to know about them? Or like, mm -hmm. how do I change my role play towards them now that I know this thing? Yeah, there's there's a, an interesting thing like, can I trust this person with this information? Like, the the mechanics of the new variant rule push you to share things that maybe like your character doesn't necessarily want to share, um, and that well, kind of sucks. I think this is important. So Ronan Ronan fifty five mentioned in in chat. What if the character doesn't want to share their backstory? Yeah. That's why questioning someone else is is important, and why the scene shouldn't rely on answering yes. answering the yep. question, yep. right? Like, because if Kurthak if Kurthak was like Grigori, what happened to that woman? And I got inspiration for telling it. I'm put in an awkward position because I don't want to tell Kurthak. I don't want him to know that. And if I if I block that, and not even if I block that scene, if I play it out in a different way, then I'm mechanically hindering the entire party, myself included, which I would have a hard time with. You know, I, I'm thinking there's some sort of bubble of inspiration in my head, in the traditional sense of the word, not a capital I inspiration, <laughs> that relies on the fiasco mechanic of, you know, if you say yes, one thing, if you say no, another thing. So it's, it's kind of like um, either you're the question, I mean, if you're the question asker, then uh, you know, like you're not the one deciding whether the information is given or withheld. And if you're the one giving or withholding information, then you don't get to determine who is being asked or what is being asked. Um, and maybe the rewards are slightly different each way. Maybe it's so like... I have, I mean, if, I, have, I have a question about mm -hmm. this whole thing. What is the total number, and this is, this is, I'm asking this in an asinine way, but what would you say is like the total number of minutes invested in getting inspiration? What's the optimal, like, should this be five minutes? Should it take us ten minutes to get to this? Like, how long should it take to have this happen? I mean, I would say five minutes or shorter, just like a really quick so, back and like forth. A, I mean, it's a vignette, right? Yes. Yeah, and you vignette. want, now, now, do you care about, as, as put on your creative director hat, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interrogate your intent, do you want this to be characters interacting with each other, or do you want it to be character interacting with audience? Let me pause and think about that for a second. Yeah, because for me, like the, the difference between the two is if it's character interacting with character, that affects the moment, right? There's a narrative moment there, and it's, it's a thing. It's a real thing. But it also affects ongoing play. Mm -hmm. But if it's character presents, if player presents character to audience, meaning both the other players, you, and the actual audience, mm -hmm. is that about, um, is that about, can it be a vignette that doesn't involve anyone else, right? Could I be like, okay, cool, I'm going to narrate a scene. It's my turn. We're taking a long rest. I haven't had my turn yet. I'm going to narrate a scene where I'm not at the camp. I'm standing out in this glade in the moonlight, sadly, like, playing my Belalaika, and a, a single tear falls from my eye onto, like, <laughs> a, a black rose lying on a grave or something. Like, That's you know, pretty like, metal. Yeah, can I just do that? Like, can, I, can that be inspiration? I say yes, actually. Um, I think it's more about audience. Because uh, okay. thinking, thinking back to it, I feel like that scene where you slaughtered the woman on your own could have also been that that's, sort that, of that scene. Was, that thing. was this. Yeah, that's yeah. what I would have done. So yeah, I think, I think so, and that's, that's also why I was always pushed to give it to everybody rather than just the person or just the people involved because it felt like a reward for the people watching and seeing. And it's like, okay... We've all, as players, seen something more about Grigori. Therefore, our characters all get inspiration. It's not directly, and it's like doesn't make a whole lot of sense in game mechanic terms, but it is the sort of extra game mechanic reward. Yeah. So what what I was going to say here is that my, and again, I don't know how this plays in the economy, but my sense would be during a long rest, if you reveal something about your character, you get inspiration. That's the only way to get inspiration. Everybody doesn't get it because they didn't contribute. Nobody mm -hmm. in a game should be rewarded for doing nothing. Mm -hmm. That's how it goes. But it would also mean like every time we have a long rest, we're all going to be Everybody like, wants I to. got a thing I got to do. Oh my God, I got to do it. Um, so maybe like, maybe there's some way to say you and anyone you include in that um, or whatever. I don't. I don't know. Like it's a. We're we're doing this thing, and this is designing role playing games. We're trying to yep. pace how we want the game's ongoing narrative to feel. We're pacing that against mechanical effectiveness in Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition. Which what about um, is difficult, right? What if every time you had a scene, you gave inspiration to everybody else, but not yourself? I would never do it. Okay. 
You don't like, think you what, would? What? I mean, I, I do it because I'm like a team player and I want my my team to have inspiration. Mm -hmm. But also, like, that's the that's the in inverse, right? Is like people are not altruistic by nature and. Yeah having to narrate purely for the sake of helping everybody else, you know, it doesn't feel like you get that payback because what if they all use their inspiration for other stuff and let me die? I'm going to be like, thanks, yep. dicks. That's true. That's yeah. a good point. Like, it's, it's a thing. I think that it's fair. The other thing that we could do since we're chopping inspiration up is just make it a pool. Be like, the party has four inspiration. Yep. When you do a scene, contribute one point to the inspiration pool. Anyone can use the inspiration pool at any time, but obviously this is like any communal resource. If, if... You know, JP reaches into that that inspiration pool one more time. I'm gonna be like, "Hey, man, save some for the rest of time us." Time out. We uh, all we all need to access. Wait, 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 that. wait, 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 this. wait, wait, wait. I had a thought. <laughs> okay, when you have a scene, you put an inspiration into the pool. Yeah. The next person who pulls that dice out needs to do the next scene. That's going to put pressure on you to remember who it was because you know your players won't do it. Possible. I mean, I think, I, I mean... You don't think, think it'd be a thing that the group would police? So here, here's the thing, like, do you want... Basically, do you want to turn everybody into Zeke or do you want to let people not do those scenes if they don't feel comfortable doing them? Um, I'd like to motivate people to be Zeke <laughs> without... Mandated. I mean, Zeke's not Zeke's not like the perfect role player or anything, but it just yeah, yeah, yeah. a player a player who contributes uh, eagerly, openly, and without necessarily mind towards uh, being rewarded. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, I think that it's I like I really like the pool of inspiration idea. I think it it makes the party more of a character. I'm a big sucker for like characters, like group characters in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, I like the idea of do a scene put your thing, put your pool point in. Um, it could also be like, do the scene, tell us what the scene revealed about your character, like as a player, be like, so when we saw Grigory doing this, what that was about was this, and you're allowed to choose how much or how little to reveal. Mm -hmm. um, like I could just be like, yeah, Grigory playing his bell like in the moonlight just shows that he's like super metal and likes being alone. Yeah. Um, but it might also be like, oh, he's crying over his dead lover or something, right? Like yeah. you, you can have these opportunities to, to give that away. And then I contribute to the pool, you could, if you want, say you can only contribute to the pool X number of times per session or whatever. Um, but, yeah, we don't want to punish people who can't contribute in that way. Yeah, what... But I also, I also think that good role players are going to try to incorporate other players, right? Like, I know when I do those things, I would be like, hey, I, I have this idea for a scene. I want to show off some stuff about Grigori, but I'd like you to be there. Can we, like, c can you tag team the scene with me? Um, what if, I mean, like, what if it was kind of like Numenera's XP mechanism, where it's like... As soon as you say, kind of like Numenera, I'm just going to check out and then see it. <laughs> All right, yeah. Uh, so, Chad, <laughs> hear me out on this. Well, no, like, um, the person who does the scene gets inspiration for themselves. Yeah. And they put one into the pool, or and they choose one other person to give inspiration to, and then that next person becomes the next scene giver, or something like that. Where it's kind of like, you know... Okay, I mean, that's even perhaps a tool for you to use, right? Where it's like, okay, Grigori is going to have a scene. Grigori gets inspiration from it, but, you know, I also really want to find out more about Zoe's character, so I give Zoe inspiration. So she has a thing that actually rewards her, and then the next time we have a scene, whatever that scene about Varani is, is up to Zoe, but she's the one now. She gains inspiration for doing it, gives it to someone else. We'd have to We'd have to balance this mechanically, but I like the idea of... I do a scene, <laughs> I do a scene, I reveal something about my character, I get inspiration, I choose one other character to get inspiration and explain how that scene affected them, or if they were directly in the scene, they also get inspiration. So I could either be like, I'm out in the moonlight, fucking ripping it on my bell, like it being awesome, and um, that shows something about me, but also, while I was doing that, uh, you know, over in the bushes, um, you know, uh, Varani was watching. What, what if, was, and then ask Zoe, like, what was Varani doing while I was doing that? Right? Uh, so, like, I don't know if I want to go as far as to say the person describing the scene gets to define how the other character is involved, mm -hmm. but maybe being able to call out another character and yes, say... Yes, and to ask them, like, how, Zoe, yeah, how did your you... your character was involved in this somehow. How? And then that also tags them as, like, they get inspiration, they're the next one. Yeah. 
in line. So, so that 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 okay, same. Hang on, that I need to type this down because okay. I find it really interesting. I find it the most interesting thing we've discussed so far, even more interesting than my original idea. So, uh, this is the way game design works. Okay. All right, type. All right, so. I feel like um, what what this does is it bypasses the idea of a pool because a pool is a shared resource and that's not a thing that Dungeons and Dragons does yet. So we would have to hack deeper to make that pool work. But being able to say, I get inspiration. How did you? How were you involved in the scene? You also get inspiration. Now we both have it. Let's um, yeah, let's continue. Now it doesn't. It still doesn't solve the the hardcore role player problem of. Every like I could do this every scene. Every time we take a long rest, I could tell you about Dr. Grigori because, you know, I can make shit up really fast and I have a pretty good idea of the general stuff about Dr. Grigori. So it would be easy for me to like pass that around. But I do like the core mechanic. I'm not sure how to balance it, but I do like the idea of um, I get inspiration and you get inspiration. But it does it does ramp up the mechanism, right? We get we get six instead of four, right? Um, Maybe. It depends on how you pace it. I mean, so, you, you are getting more inspiration than, uh, than just one per scene, but also you're getting less inspiration than the 16 or whatever that the original suggestion was when everybody in the group got it. Every yeah. long rest. Um, so, uh, I've always, one of my personal assumptions is that each player can only ever have one scene per session. Um... <laughs> I feel. I don't know yeah, if that I makes sense like, because it's an arbitrary limiter on people revealing more about their characters. No, I mean you can you yeah like that's the thing is like I feel like again and this is just the the curmudgeonly game designer in me saying like if you don't reward a thing players won't do it mm -hmm. because they won't. Um, I mean the actual truth is they do things they're rewarded for more often and they do other stuff by accident or without thinking. Yep. Um, I think the idea of um, yeah, pacing it would be the thing. That would be how to figure out, like, should I do it every time? How do we do it? Like, how do we pace it out? That's the question that still really needs to be answered about this particular version of that mechanic. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love the idea. I would love to use this as a flashback to be yep. like, you know, before anyone even saw me on the West Marches, you know, there's this, like, okay, so we see this, like, village, and the village is on fire. And there's all of these knights, and they're, like, lying on the ground with these, like, black arrows in them. Some of them are, like, twisted in pain and, you know, have this, like, rotting virus. And we see someone fleeing from the village. Who was it? And then one of the other players would be like, oh, yeah, that was me. I was at that village. Okay, and so we're like, we see you fleeing in terror. And then we, we get to see, you know, Grigori, like, looting one of the bodies, like, hunched over in his cloak. You know, his hands glowing with, like, maleficent energy. So it, like... God, this feels like it would be really hard for people who are not already GMs and used to just, like, throwing out, like, here's an intense thing about my character, or here's an interesting thing about my character. It might just be, like, I don't know, do you think it's... T we're, we're terrible people to ask about this, but, like, if you took this to, to the group, do you think people would feel comfortable doing this? I, I think we would have to ask newer people, like um, Pocket Says, like Zoe... Um, uh, people who haven't been role playing for long, and and find out more in play of whether or not it feels something that that they feel comfortable with, or that they feel like they can do. Um, one thing that I um, I'm not a hundred percent on board on is sort of this ability. So like if it's I, I love the idea of having these scenes be flashbacks, or having them be able to be flashbacks, or flash sides where it's like. This thing happened this session, but it was off screen. So now let's yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. While while you guys were doing this, I was off doing that. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't want for like you know Grigori to be adventuring with um, you know Varani and to be like, okay, I was burning this town before I even got to Viriscali, and you know, uh, Varani, how were you involved? Because it defines sure. something something about that character that that player may not necessarily agree with. Where it's like, you know, I. I wasn't anywhere near that village, or I wasn't there, well, or I wasn't I mean, that's, a contributor. So that's the question you got to ask yourself: Are players? Do, are, do you want to run a game? Is is West March is a game where players can just say like, mm, "No, I wasn't there." That sounds dumb. Or do you expect players to to step up and be like, "Cool, let's make this work." Now, there's kind of a, a philosophical thing about the West Marches, which is that for me the 
it's it's like it's it's like authorship is a really solid concept in the West Marches for me. So like um, w w there was some talk in the Q and A last time about uh, sort of a, a way for players to inject information about the setting um, into the West Marches, kind of like spout lore. Uh, and I came mm -hmm. out and I responded to that and I said, I don't think that fits in the West Marches. No, it totally doesn't. Because the West Marches as a setting is strongly defined by the Game Master and it's something that the players are each exploring. Now, similarly, I would say that each player has strong authorship of their background or of their character and the way their character sort of reacts to things. Well, and I mean, keep in mind too that we did, like we did say, and we can always change this, but we did say that like the the background of your character doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. It's only the shit that happens on screen that we care about. So it's a way to show stuff that wouldn't normally come up, right? Mm -hmm. You get control over what you want to show about your character. But again, to go back, like the game is not about showing, it's about learning, right? Mm -hmm. So the focus, the focus, and this is a bit where like you have a scene where you reveal something, that's the opposite of the ethos of the game, right? Like you shouldn't be revealing, you should be uncovering. So making the thing about, and I know this is backtracking, but making the thing about a question about another character, you want to discover something about them, mm -hmm. makes more sense in the general design ethos of the game than I'm going to show you something about my character. Because they're they're the they're the active the, the person showing is is becoming it becomes active in that role and the person uh, receiving information is passive. Uh, yeah. If you flip it and make it a question, the the learner is active and the revealer is passive. They're the secondary role, which yeah. sticks with you're trying to figure shit out about the world and you're figuring things out about the internal world of your characters. Yeah, maybe it's that it's it's less that the character has a solo scene for themselves. And then they they call out someone else to somehow be involved. Maybe it's that I call out someone else to see a scene about them, and then I am the other person involved, or something like that. Well, so here's another question you can ask: Are the characters asking these questions, or are the players right? Like, if yeah. I describe a scene that I'm like, it's a flashback. Grigori has a nightmare about this like raid on the village or whatever. I describe it. Mm -hmm. Can Dodger or JP or Co or whoever can they ask me as people like as as players of the game? Okay, Adam, tell me more about what this particular thing meant, or like why did you feel like that? Yeah, uh, or why did Gr why is Grigori having nightmares about this thing? Mm -hmm. Right, and then that's the players because Dungeon World and, and Apocalypse World do a little bit of that where we we interrogate the player level about the character level sometimes. We take mm -hmm. a step back and say, I want to know more about this. My character might never know that, but like, why Why do you hate civilization so much? Or like, but it's got to be tied to the scene. Like the trigger is the player who does the scene is responsible for revealing a thing. And then the other characters, or the other players have to ask that player about their character. Yeah, I so, think, I, I, I like this idea that it's player to character. So it's like, Adam asks Verani. Zoe yeah. asks Grigori. Um, and that also plays into that intention where it's it's revealing for an audience, right? It's important yeah. for the player audience and for the audience audience. Yeah, I, and I agree. And I think that it's way easier for... Um, like, the, the initial scene might be difficult, but you can give the players who are not as comfortable coming up with a big... Like, I'm going to make a big flowery scene of grim darkness, and everybody's going to, like, have lots of opportunity to ask questions, because I'll try to, like, lead them into asking me things. But a player can just say, like, um, you have a scene of, like, Verani making vegetable stew, you know, off, off by herself. And so then I would be like... This is, like, a weird out-of-character thing for you. Like, why, do you, why are you doing this? It, like... You know, I, I'm going to be able to interrogate that question a little, that, that scene a little bit better from that angle. Yes. Uh, and it lets, it lets, I don't know, I mean, I think that there is some interplay there. The The reward for this should be, what, the whole group gets inspiration or just the person doing the scene and the person asking the question? Yeah, I, I just, would go, I'd keep going with, like, the one asking gets it, the one answering gets it. Sure. Whatever the answer is, whatever the question is. And, um, this and then is, this also is the it passes can, off the burden of asking, right? Well, and if inspiration, if we keep inspiration binary, like it's on-off, this is going to allow us to meta-strategize because I'm going to tell a story, then we're going to stop, and I'm going to be like, okay, who needs inspiration? <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, okay, so you don't have inspiration. JP, you have it. I have it. Co has it. You got to ask the question. Right. Yep. It's it's a lot like 
um, spending checks in Torchbearer where you you pass them around when you because inevitably one person will gather up a whole bunch of them uh, and then they have to give them to other people you can't use them twice in a row so I think that that helps that if you use the thing is if you're good at asking questions or you have questions about characters that you want to answer you're gonna blow your inspiration lots because it's gonna give you an opportunity to get it back Yep. The the other problem is though is that if these scenes come up and we all have inspiration, the scene won't happen, which is yes. going to be okay. Yeah. Well, it it also like since it can only happen well, at a long rest. That's, so that's I, bad I, gameplay. If we hit a long rest and then we don't have two people that don't have inspiration, we are we're fucking this up. But I also like that because it counters no, it counters the, the problem with inspiration right now, where people don't spend it. So it's like okay, long rest coming up. Yeah, let's go for it. Sure. We we need to yeah we if we're engaging the mechanisms correctly two out of the four people should always not have inspir at least two out of the four should always not have inspiration before we go into a long rest yeah and I like that like Dungeons and Dragons is a game right it's role playing and it's a game it's a role playing game so there there should be elements of it that um, we can we can game like we should be able to game this system I I like this I like this like. One player offers up a, a clue, another player interrogates, scene's over, they get inspiration. We don't formalize um, we don't formalize that you're, you have to go next. We strategize, should you go next because you don't have inspiration. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Adam, we had a very interesting conversation at the start of this, like before we started this episode, um, and we haven't organically gotten to that place yet. Can we somehow fast forward through our thoughts that let us talk about that a little bit in front of our audience? Oh, God, I don't think so. I think we need okay. to do a whole other thing just about experience before we get to that. Because yep. that's, that's a dark place that I don't think we're ready to go to yet. <laughs> that's, that's fair. All right, <laughs> I so... Feel, I don't feel ready bringing that up and then trying to deal with it in two minutes. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, mm -hmm, that's going to... We're going to have yeah. a lot of interest. Um, yeah. <laughs> So uh, I'm going to start a Q&A on the, the subreddit, r slash itmejp. So head on over there. I'm going to include uh, sort of a, a quick copy-paste version of the new inspiration rule we've come up with here at the end of uh, today's conversation. Um, I think that's it for today's 5e hack attack show. Do you, you, can do you feel, I was going to say, do you feel like comfortable uh, for the next, I don't know when we're going to do this again. I'd like to, obviously. Mm -hmm. Do you feel comfortable bringing to the table a draft of, the, the new inspiration rules and maybe like some new backgrounds for us to pick apart next time? I, I think that uh, new inspiration rules definitely and possibly new backgrounds. Maybe a few. Yeah, or, or at least like, like well, I mean, we can we can spitball it, right? We can mm -hmm. we can design it live. You if you want to come just with a list. Oh wait, are you talking about next hack attack? Yeah, next time we yeah, do yeah, hack yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I can come so, with some stuff like that. Yeah, bring a list and some notes and, and a, a, a more polished version of the inspiration rules we talked about. We'll mm -hmm. use part one to go over those. We'll use part two, hopefully, to dive into the black pool that lies experience. before us called experience. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, um, cool. Yes, Q&A will be on r slash itmejp. Um, so, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Silent Osiris. Um, with the O is a zero. You can uh, follow uh, Adam Koble. Tell them about yourself, Adam. You can follow me uh, pr preferably right here, where you're at. Uh, throw a follow on uh, twitch.tv slash Adam Koble. Um, if you want to hear me talk about game design stuff outside of watching me do it live, um, Twitter is the place for that, at Skinny Ghost. Um, I stream pretty regularly, and even when I'm streaming video games, I seem to talk about role-playing games. So, come and watch me play Heroes of the Storm, and we'll talk about representation in role-playing games. I can't get away. It's all I do. Um, I also wanted to talk about, if you haven't already checked out, I talked about it at the beginning uh, of the stream. If you haven't already checked out, there's a, a game that I wrote the setting material for that was released today called Katanas and Trenchcoats. Uh, it's a, a game of 90s action goth fantasy. It's so silly. But I'm happy to be able to say that now my name is on a role-playing game with Justin Achille, which is pretty funny. Um, and also my um, uh, uh, stretch goal for Blades in the Dark, uh, we hit the number today, which I'm really excited about. So I'm going to be designing um, a space fantasy, psychedelic, sci-fi thing for, uh, for Blades. So if you haven't checked out the Blades in the Dark Kickstarter, go do that, and I'm done with the promotion. Steven? I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this. The character... <laughs> <laughs> Each long rest, any character may frame a scene about themselves that reveals more. Yeah, 
The scene can involve others or be a solo vignette. It can be a flashback or something happening right now. The character who frames this scene about themselves... It's like you're writing a legal document. Their the, self? The character of the first part. Yeah, the, yeah exactly. the character of the second part. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about wording later. Um, okay. <laughs> make, sure, make sure that we post the um, Google Doc link in the Q&A. The place to be after this, Reddit, get me JP, Q&A, we'll both be there. Check it out. Yep. All right, y'all. That's it for today. Uh, that Q&A will be up very momentarily, and I'll tweet it. So if you don't know, oh, look at that. If you uh, want to find out what's going on with that, then you should definitely give me a follow at Silent Zero Cyrus. Um, that's all. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Thanks we for coming. We love you. <laughs>